Until the end. And Elijah said to Elijah, if you can see me, he asked him for a request. And he said that I may have double the anointing, the grace, the spirit of what God placed upon you upon my life. He said, It's a very hard thing for me to do, but if you can see me. Tonight we have to make a sacrifice to Christ for the double. We have here is the prophetic night. Also, we have the bishop who spent three hours in heaven, and the Lord showed him so many different things. So we have him double. Yeah. We have him like Elijah, have double. We have the prophetic, and at the same time, we have the supernatural heavenly visitation. Heavenly visitation. Amen. As Paul said, I will speak of one. Whether in the body or in the spirit, I cannot tell, but one that was caught up into the third heaven mm -hmm. and showing great and wonderful things to wonderful to even speak about and tonight we're going to have our full taste mm -hmm. of the wonderful and miraculous things that god has shown us now mm -hmm. so come on let's give that a clap for double tonight yeah. Yeah. also we have a, you don't like to be called pastor ak but minister ak at the back is going to come and blow this off and we're going to give you what you call it If it will come and share as well. Amen. But tonight we want to put the, the man of God. And this man was featured on 700 Club. They flew all the way from America, spent some time with him because his testimony is so awesome. Just get ready to be inspired, to be challenged, so that your faith could go into another level. We will know that all things is possible. When Jesus says to Nathaniel, you can see, you will see greater things. This is the season to see greater things. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us put our hands together as we will sing the vision. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is Jesus. My dear beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, greetings to you from the land of India. Amen. We are very happy here because we are in the presence of the law. Amen. It's good to be in the presence of the law. Yeah. Praise God. Before my sharing testimony, Reaching the world, my wife is going to sing one song on Psalm 103. Amen. Psalm 103. Amen. So you can explain what she's going to sing. Give Telugu language, my language. You may not understand my language, but you can enjoy in your spirit. Na pranama, na antarangama, na luna, na samastama, na pranama, na antarangama, na luna, na samastama. Wow. 
you don't we don't get the faith in God because we are uh, serving idol gods, images, creation. We have to enjoy with creation, not worship the creation. For Hindus, you know, they worship with creation. They have they feel proud actually in the world because they think you know we have many gods in India. Can you believe how many gods? 333 million gods. They knew 99 million gods' names, 66 million female gods, and 33 million male gods. They knew the names. Every family picked one idol god. You know, the generations they worship the same god. Sometimes they worship multiple gods because. If they want to bless by God, they worship Lakshmi. She yes. is the Lakshmi, Lakshmi. idol Lakshmi. God. Like mm -hmm. uh, if they want health, you know, different God. If you want to more prosperity, like you know, I don't know how they choose like that. You know. I don't want to tell all these, you know. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't have any real faith in God, but they have a fear all the time. They live with fear. And the Islam population, 14%. I don't want to say them because we are we love them. We are praying for them. Everyone should come out to Jesus Christ. But they don't have any faith, they don't have any fear. They want to do something, they do it. Actually, in India we say like this: one Islam man equal to 100 Hindus. Such kind of day they have Islam people. They want to do something, they do it. They don't care. They don't afraid. But you know, we have to understand, they don't have any faith. They don't have any fear. But Christians, 3%. In India we say like this, at least you know, yeah, something is better than nothing. You know, Apostle Thomas, one of the disciples of Jesus Christ, he came to India and he preached the word of God and he died in India. Even after 2017, years later, still 3% Christians. Out of 3%, 1% Catholic people, you know, Catholic means they worship, you know, Virgin Mary and a uh, small baby boy, Jesus Christ. There's no much difference, Hindus and uh, Catholics in India. And 1%, Evangelicals, in India, Evangelicals means Baptist, Lutherans, Methodists, like that, Christians. They don't do much outreach, but uh, they go to church regularly. But one person, uh, spiritual and Pentecostal people, I can say Pentecostal people are very strong in the law. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Because we have Holy Spirit. Mm. Every Christian must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm. Though if still you didn't receive the Holy Spirit, you fast and pray. Then you will receive the Holy Spirit. Spend your time in the presence of the Lord. Pray to God. Then you will receive the Holy Spirit. Mm. You know, in India, Christians having real faith in God, but they don't have fear. Of course, we have godly fear. We don't have earthly fear. You can understand the difference between Hindus and Islams and Christians. Once again, Hindus, they don't have any faith, but they have a fear. Islam people, they don't have faith, they don't have fear. And the Christians, they have faith. No fear. Hallelujah. <laughs> in Hindu family, <coughs> 72, 62 to 1978, I was a Hindu man. In 78, I was in an engineering college, I was doing civil engineering course. I hear the atheism teachings in engineering college. You know, if some atheism people came on the university, they began to teach about their faith. Faith is different, you know, they don't believe God. They hate rich people and they love the poor people. They like to help the poor people. The main thing is they want to see all people equal in the world. Mm. I like those kind of statements. Mm. I become an atheist. Mm. 
you know, in 1981, on May 18, I married my wife. I don't know what is the marriage those days. My father conducting a wedding for my sister, so he wanted to do my marriage also along with my sister's marriage to save money. I was 18. I don't know what is the marriage. In India, our marriages are different than your marriages. You people dating first, then you marry. <coughs> I don't understand some people dating three years, four years, five years. Why? We need a lot of time. Just we dating three months, six months. One year is one year is okay to understand each other. Why you are taking, you know, three years, four years, five years? That's why you broke up and you date another, another, <laughs> like that. But in India, we marry fast, then we begin to date each other. <laughs> to, know, to know each other. But in India, not much divorces. Can you believe? Point zero one percentage divorce in India. Very little. Very little. Even Hindus, Islam, they don't divorce. Even Christians. Christians means one wife, one husband. Mm. Marriage means a lifelong. Where is my brother Louis Pastor Louis? <laughs> and Elizabeth, where are they gone? <laughs> oh my gosh. Hallelujah. Amen. Marriage means lifelong. Not one month, not one year, not temporary, not contract prejudice. Marriage is permanent. Hallelujah. Praise God. After, you know, we married on May 18th in 1981. After two months, in the month of August, we came to our grandmother's place, my total family. My father, my mother, my all brothers, my sister, everyone came to uh, the place called Pattapalli. I know the exact date. On August 6th, I was suffering from high fever. I couldn't go anywhere. I didn't eat anything on that day because I stuck inside the house on my bed because of fever. I had a fever like a 104 degrees, high fever. You know, young people at the age of 18 years, they don't care. Fever, and the stomach pain, headache. They don't know what is a headache, you know, at the age of 18. Because headaches will start after 35, 40. Praise God. Amen. That night, I was sleeping outside of my house. Why? Because inside there is no electricity, no light. Those days we had eight hours electricity in the country. Now, by the grace of God, we have 16 hours electricity in Amen. India. Praise God. <laughs> but you have 24 hours electricity. In this room in India, we have one light and one fan. But how many lights you have here? Oh my gosh. Oh, five, six, seven. Seven lives. God blessed you here. You have 24 hours electricity. I want to say one thing. You have to praise God more than us. You're also Amen. praising God. You're also praising God. But you have to praise God. But God blessed you here. I see with my own eyes how much you blessed by God in the kingdom. But you understand, if you go to other countries, then only you understand how much you bless by God. Don't complain. Don't murmur. God gave you something, jobs, houses, whatever it may be. Please enjoy it. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. If you do like that, God will give more. Amen. If you complain, if you murmur, you lose <coughs> your blessings. You can understand if you go to third world countries, you only really understand how much you bless blessed by God in UK. I praise God for you because God brought you here with purpose. Amen. Purpose, with purpose. You know, once upon a time, this country, UK, ruled 52 countries in the world. And then they spread the gospel. That's why, you know, they bought so much lands in Lutheran missionaries, Lutheran Baptist, Methodist people, they bought the nowadays people selling there. In India, 
I know biggest churches, you know, Methodist churches, they have a lot of property, but people are selling them. Because they, they sacrifice. Missionaries died in India. Mm -hmm. Died in India. Dear brothers and sisters, God brought you here with purpose to evangelize where you are, where you go to work, workplace, house place, when you travel, evangelize, preach the gospel to someone. Praise God. That night, my mother was with me on my same bed because in India, I was a married man even though my mother was with me on my same bed. Can you believe? In India, children feel sickness. Father or mother, they like to sleep with the child, to protect the child. Mm. The main thing, to protect the child. Mm. That night, God visited me. If you read the Bible, you can see three words, I call powerful words. Number one, dreams. Number two, visions. Number three, revelations. Mm. I strongly believe visions are more powerful than dreams. Mm. Revelations are more powerful than dreams and visions. Mm. God visited me through revelation. So I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Mm. I will tell how I became a Christian. On August 6th, midnight, one o'clock, two angels came down to our street in the village. When they came onto my street, lightning, big lightning came into my house. Mm. So who are sleeping in the house, they woke up and they came out. Mm. And who are sleeping nearby my house, they woke up. And I, I, I saw, I opened my eyes, it did one o'clock, I saw two angels, they were walking on my street. I had a question that time, why these two angels, you know, I don't believe angels, I don't believe God those days, mm. but you know, I saw them, they are walking. I had a question, why these angels came midnight walking, what, what, what purpose? Then, they are coming very close to me, so I got fear, I closed my eyes, I was thinking inside. But they came up to me, they touched my body, mm. I felt it. This side and this side. That time, I had a 104 degrees fever. I was shaking like this. Couldn't sleep much because of fever. There's no hospitals. We have to go, we have to walk like a, a, at least a, three to four kilometers to go to the hospital. But if you go to the general hospital, we call government hospitals in India, if you go to the hospital and if you say stomach pain, they give the white round pill. If you say headache, same white round pill. No much healing, not much healing. But that night, my mother woke up and my mother tried to protect me with her hands because she saw the angels. Mm. You know, when they came and touched my body, you know, I felt it, so I shouted very loudly, Amma! Means in my language, Mom. Mm. You know, my mom woke up and she tried to protect me with her hands. Then, but, you know, the angels, they took me to heaven. My mm. clouds. Mm. And they left me before throne. And they gone away. <coughs> Two angels gone away. I was alone and I was thinking, how can I go to my place again? Who will take me to my place? I was thinking like that. Mm. Then I saw the great flash of the light from throne. One man came unto me. He gave his hand like this. And he said, I am Jesus Christ. I saw him top to bottom. I didn't pay much attention because I was thinking inside, what he's going to do, he's going to kill me. Why? Because I was an atheist that time. But he told me very clearly, very smoothly, I want to show Bethlehem and Jerusalem. I want to show Bethlehem and Jerusalem. I never heard about Bethlehem and Jerusalem. I don't know what is the meaning of Bethlehem, what is the meaning of Jerusalem. But Jesus Christ, he took me over there and he shown the Bethlehem and he said that that was my birthplace. Then he shown to, he shown the Jerusalem and he said that was my death place. I saw in 1981, on August 6th, midnight, 
Then 1997, I saw really, you know, Bethlehem and the Jerusalem, Jordan, Israel, it's easy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Then he told me, Jesus Christ told me, you, he told me, I died on the cross, I buried, I rose again, I'm still living. Then he told me, you do my ministry service, I will be with you. Then he shown whole world in front of me. He told me, I will send you to the nations as my witness. Then he brought me again from heaven to earth. I went to heaven with the two angels midnight, one o'clock. I came from heaven to earth, Jesus Christ, early morning, four o'clock. Mm. When I came to earth, I woke up on my bed. My father came up to me and he hugged me like this and he said, my son, my son, you died and rose again, do you know? I said, I don't know. I saw his face, he was crying. My mother, my proper family crying. And my father told me what happened between one o'clock and four o'clock. And when the angels visited our village, you know, you know, lightning came into my house. So some people saw the lightning, so they began to come to my house. And my father, he came unto me because I shouted very loudly, Amma! So he came unto me, he touched my body, and he moved by the key, my body, no conscious. So he sent a man to bring the doctors. He went to another village, and you know, in India, in the villages, you know, doctors go with stethoscopes, they check the heart and the pulse. And they said, no heart beating, your son died. They told to my father, my family, that my parents, you know, praying, but my father began to think and pray to God. He said, Lord, I supposed to walk with you, but he heard the gospel in 1956 through the Lutheran missionaries. That's why never criticize any denomination. Mm. Everyone is praising God. Amen. We are not Amen. Baptist Christians. Mm. We are not Lutheran Christians. We are not Pentecostal Christians. We are Christians, full stop. That's it. Mm. We need to respect other denominations also. Mm. But my father, you know, some missionaries came <coughs> to his hometown. They were preaching in English. No one knows English, you know, those days. Even British people ruled our country 250 years, but no one knows English, those days. But uh, he knew a little bit English because he did the bachelor's degree those days. So he began to translate from English to Telugu. So he heard the gospel to the translation. He gave his life secretly to the God in 1956. Praise God. You know, that time he remembered his golden days. And then he told to God, Lord, I supposed to walk with you, but I failed. But today onwards, I strongly believe you send the angels to our village to visit my family. So today onwards, what I believe, today onwards, whatever it will be cost, I will walk with you. I give the letters to the government, you know. Those days someone became a Christian, they lose everything. They lose everything. But my father, you know, he used to go to Lutheran church, beginning, then he go to the Pentecostal churches. Then he filled the Holy Spirit. Then he became a big officer, very high level officer in the government. Mm -hmm. Those days someone became a Christian, they lose everything. They don't trust, they don't trust Christians. Mm -hmm. So he worried in the world. He gone back into the world because we are six children. And he has two sisters. His parents died in his early age. Parents died. So he has to conduct two sisters' wedding. Big responsibilities. That's why he worried and he gone back into the world. But that night he remembered his God and he told to God, Lord, I will walk with you. I will give the letter to the government, whatever it will be cost. If I lose job, okay. You don't care because he want to walk with God. But he told to God, Lord, there is no reason for my son to death here because he doesn't know I was with the Lord. My body was on my bed, but my soul and spirit separated from my body three hours. Mm. Gone to heaven, 
And again, God, Jesus Christ sent my soul and spirit back into my body. Amen. So I got life again. I have sustained up the encounter with Jesus Christ. Amen. I praise God. Amen. I, I thankful to God lifelong because He visited me. Amen. He visited me. And you know, my father told to God, Lord, if you raise my son from death, I will give him to the ministry. Amen. Not only one son, Lord, I give my all five sons mm -hmm. to your ministry. Mm -hmm. He was praying, dedicating, crying in front of the Lord. Then Jesus Christ, you know, you send my soul and spirit back into my body. So I got life again. So I woke up on the bed. So the people surprised him. And my partner family also surprised him. And uh, they asked me, what happened to you? I told everything about Jesus Christ. I told me Bethlehem, Jerusalem, to do his ministry. And he wanted to send me the, the nations as yes, witness. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. And God is real. God is not something. He's real. He's real. God is real. I believe God is real. God is Amen. in my life. You know, with God we are something. Without God we are nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Zero. We are zero without God. If you have a God, you have faith in your life, you will be something. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, you know, in the morning, you know, people, many people believe and they accept that Jesus Christ. The main thing, I came unto Lord. My total family they accept that Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord. Mm -hmm. The next day, my father went to meet one apostle in Rajamandu. The pastor named K.R. David. Now, he died. He went home to the Lord. My father went there and uh, met him. He shared everything what happened in our family, in the, in the, in the village, mm -hmm. right? in the house. And the uh, pastor said, to my father, send your son immediately. My father came to the house and he gave money to go over there. I went there. The apostle, pastor asked me so many questions, you know. Then he gave me one Bible as a gift and one application to go to Bible college. I came to home. The day, same day, my father arranged a prayer meeting. The first one, that was first prayer meeting in our family. You know, I was 18. I did so many bad things. You know, young people, they don't do bad things in front of parents. Mm -hmm. They do secretly, you know, with friends. Mm -hmm. I was like that. But I cried a lot in a prayer meeting. <coughs> and uh, I confessed my, uh, my sins. And I gave my life to Jesus Christ. 100%. Totally, I surrendered to God. Then, I received the Holy Spirit. And I received the Holy Spirit. And uh, I sent the application to the Bible College. They accepted me in the Bible college. You know, we are not Christians. We don't know what to do, what we have to do in the beginning. So I went to Bible college without any receiving the water baptism. In the college, you know, they're talking about the water baptism. Teachers asking one by one how you accept Jesus Christ, which is what kind of baptism you, you took. You know, like some people believe immersion baptism. Some people uh, uh, walking around, you know, like a flag, Salvation Army, you know, they walk surrounding the, you know, brown flag, you know, walk around like that. But some people really uh, received the immersion baptism. So we do in India like that, we receive the immersion baptism uh, on January 1st, 1982. Then we feel the Holy Spirit. Then I went through different Bible colleges. She, uh, my wife was with me in one Bible college. Then I became a pastor in 1984, exactly on August 6th in Bangalore City. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I was there six years as a pastor. Then I came to Bible college as principal and dean. I learned how to train young men and women in the Bible college. So God knew, God prepared you for something for future. Amen. Now you are going to hardship means you will 
you will be okay in future. You are ready to face any kind of problems. Mm. So God knows everything, but we don't know. Mm. Sometimes we don't know. But you know, God visited me in 1981, 91 again to go to the new place, a place called Vishakhapatnam. I traveled by train with seven men with my home luggage. I reached the city after three days. I took one home for rent. Then I started the worship in 1981 in the month of June. Mm. Can you believe how many people in the first church? Just me and my wife. Mm. Now we have 225 mm. members. We did very hard work, not easy to be a pastor. I don't know in UK, in UK everywhere is same. It's not easy. Can I tell one thing? We are sending people to heaven, but people are sending us to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> ministry is not easy. <laughs> don't come to ministry without God. You need a prophecy, a confirmation, something you need a confirmation. Then only you come to ministry. So in India, very hard to be a church. Not easy. Praise God. You know, we build a church among 26 Hindu temples in India. It's very hard to build a temple, church here by temples. We need, a main, we need at least to uh, uh, maintain distance like three kilometers from the Hindu temple. Then only they give the permission to build that church. But God used one man. His wife was sick in the hospital. He called me to go over there. But I went there, I prayed for her. And the doctors told him, you know, she's going to die, die within three days. Take her to home. You know, a rich people, big family. And uh, I went there, I prayed, I came back to home. Again, he called me next day. You know, in India we say like this, if you meet again with another person because you love him, you have something happened to you. So, I don't know what happened, he didn't tell me anything, but he called me again, second time, to his home. He's a big man, very big man. Without him, People, local people don't conduct any Hindu festival. That kind of person. But I went there, I prayed again, prayed again. You know what happened? They are giving the liquids to the spoons into our uh, body. They are doing like this, because no, not going anything inside. But uh, they prepared something. After my prayer, I was sitting there. They, they brought, you know, soup. They want to give. She said, no. I want rice. Amen. Amen. In India, we eat a lot of rice. In UK, what you are eating? Fish and chips. <laughs> I don't know how you survive. And salads. We need a strong food. Strong. That's why we eat a lot of rice. And we get the diabetes, sugar <laughs> Because rice is not good. Brown rice is okay. Small portion okay. You eat this much rice, that's why it's wrong. Bishop Bagels. This is the pulpit. <laughs> Don't eat pulpit. Oh, Amen. Hallelujah! Amen! Hallelujah! Amen! And uh, God touched her. God healed her. Amen! When doctor specialist told her, told him she's going to die within three days. Mm. Can you believe? God healed her. She lived seven more years. Yeah. That guy gave the letter to the government. He mentioned, we don't have any objection to build the church here in this location. So, I built the church. Praise God. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. It's very hard to build a church in pastor's life in India. They work hard, they, earn, they you know, keep some money for the land. They have like a, a 1,000 <coughs> uh, pounds, but the land cost is 5,000. But they, they have 5,000 uh, pounds, the land cost is 10,000 pounds. Like so they cannot buy the land. It's very hard to build the life, you know. It takes life to build a church in India. Mm -hmm. It costs the life. It takes life 
50 years to build the one church. But if someone wants to build the Hindu temple, just one person donate money. Mm. One person. If you want to build a church in India, build 100 people, 100 people to sponsor, even though we cannot finish. Mm. Hindu temple, one man donate money. If you don't show sufficient of money, he give more, more, more mm. to until finish. Please pray for the churches in India. Mm. Need it. You know, people like how homes together, but people go to temples, they have temples. People go to mosques, they have building mosques. At the same time, they expect to build some kind of separate, you know, like the separate hall, separate room to gather to worship the Lord. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, we started one Bible college in 1998. We began to bring the young people into the Bible college to train. We train them, then we began to send them to the villages. In India, 1% to 50,000 people lives, we call village. 50,000 to 500,000 people lives, we call town. About 500,000 people to 3 million, we call city. About 3 million, we call metropolitan cities. In India, mostly people live in Metro, uh, villages, 80%, I think 75, 80% people living in villages. Mm. It's very hard to reach the people with gospel. Mm. There are TV ministries, radio ministries, but Indian people like to watch the movies. Who will turn the Christian program? Mm. It's very hard. It's very hard mm. to reach the people. That's why we go to the villages to conduct the gospel meetings, the healing meetings. Mm. People come. We share the gospel with them. We pray for them. People come unto Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There are 700,000 villages in India. Just 70,000 villages reached with gospel. Still 630,000 villages never hear about Jesus Christ. Mm. They don't know. Jesus Christ means they don't know. But if you go there, if you tell about Jesus Christ, they don't understand man or woman. And then when you explain of crucifixion, they can understand and they come to Jesus Christ. Amen. But can you believe? I will give them one example. Nowadays, you know, you can go to the interior villages, you can buy Pepsi and Coca Cola. Mm. But if you say about Jesus Christ, they don't know. Who is great? Pops or Christ? <laughs> Who is great? Christ. Christ. Yes. But missionaries, still Christians, didn't take the Jesus name into the interior villages. Mm. So we have to hard work. We do hard work. We have to work together to spread the gospel, introduce Jesus Christ to them. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, so far we trained more than two, three hundred students in the Bible College, but we established 110 churches in the village. pastors. Out of 110 pastors, we have 21 widow pastors. In India, women can preach the gospel, okay, but not to run the church as a pastor. Cultural problem. But we encourage them. Husband, their husbands died through the persecution, sickness, accidents, and food poisoning. But we encourage them to stand on the vision, continue the ministry as a pastor. Mm. You know what we are doing? We are bringing those kind of family children into Bible college. We train them, then we send them back to mother place. They help the mother at the same time. They get the practical training and they became a pastor mm -hmm. in one day. Mm -hmm. Please pray for the church planting, pastors and widow pastors. We have Bible college, one Bible college. You know, Bible college is very important in the ministry. Mm -hmm. If we don't train some students, we can establish churches. Mm. We cannot go much to the villages to preach the gospel because we train the students, we send them to the villages, we go there. Sometimes we do one day meeting, two days or three day gospel meeting. We go and preach the gospel. So please pray for that uh, the village outreaches. And we have five children homes. We don't call orphanages in India, five children homes with 136 children. We are feeding them 
we give them breakfast, lunch and dinner, we send them to school also. We keep them until their high school, then we send them, if they're called by God, we send them to Bible college. If not, we send them to the, okay, like vocational school, do you know vocational schools like the carpentry, uh, welding, building, electrical, uh, thing like that. So please pray for the uh, children homes. And we have 14 sewing training institutes for women and uh, widows. In India, once <coughs> husband died, women become widow. They don't remarry. Don't remarry. That's a problem. Olden days, once husband died, you know, Hinduism don't bury the body in the ground. They burn the body. At the same time, the husband side families, you know, they don't allow her to marry anyone. That's why they they push her into the fire to die with husband. Mm -hmm. It's a thought. Mm -hmm. But somehow they stopped, you know, 40, 50 years ago, they stopped. No more like that. But now, when husband died, they become widow, they don't remain. But men, wife died. He's ready to marry within three months. <laughs> but women not like that. Women stand for children. So, you know, women life is nature is different, but men nature is different. Please pray for the sewing, sewing ministries. We help. We try in six months. Then we provide sewing missions to widows, orphan girls, handicapped girls, and the poor girls. Please pray. Why are we are why we are helping poor girls? Please note this point. In India, women, even Hinduism, Islam, even Christianity also, some normal Christians, they take dowry. Dowry means women family has to give the money to me and my family. Then only two families sit down one place, they discuss and they just pick the date for wedding. If they don't give money, no wedding. Seriously. Mm -hmm. But your culture is good. I like your culture. You can date, you can date someone. You know, that's nice, you know. Date someone you can marry. But make sure it must be a godly person. Yes. Both sides must be godly. Otherwise, you face the problem lifelong. Mm -hmm. Lifelong. If you don't get the right person, oh my gosh. It's many problems. If you solve one problem, and afternoon again another problem ready. Evening another problem. <laughs> you sleep without peace. Wife and husband in one room and one bed, but no peace. <laughs> Make sure it's real good, good someone, good, godly. And not only good, godly. Please pray for the sewing, you know, ministries. We're helping so many women. We bring so many uh, poor birds into the sewing institutes. We train them. We give them sewing mission, they make money. Not only making money, they save money, they give something to parents. Parents have something. And they arrange the wedding for the girls. We have so many testimonies like that. And we have outreach in four leper colonies. We're helping 100 leprosy families. And we do a lot of gospel and healing meetings. And the pastors and leaders conferences in India. My other brothers also, uh, went through different Bible colleges, all become full-time <coughs> ministers, <coughs> pastors. But two brothers went home with the Lord. Now we are three brothers. Together we are doing one ministry. Amen. With different responsibilities. Please pray for the ministry. One man of God came from America to India in 1992 and 93. 93, he gave me one prophecy. He told me, my son, I choose a new to do ministry, so I will send you to Singapore, Australia, America, and other countries. Then he told me very clearly, you are going to persecute one day, be faithful in him. Mm. You understand, you know, sometimes prophecies, you know, strong prophecies, sometimes weak prophecies. You know, you know, I didn't take serious, but you know, he went, the man of God went to America in uh, next day, in 1994, he sent me an invitation to go to America. I paid the fees to embassy, I went there, they refused my visa. But Lord, 
open the door to go to Singapore. Again, a, a man of God in 1995, he sent an invitation to me. Again, they refused my visa. But Lord opened the door to go to Australia. Amen. In 96 or 97, I was busy with the local church construction. But uh, the man of God died in, in uh, 1995. I don't have any connection. But my brother, fourth brother, was studying in the recent university, you know, Pat Robertson, CBN, Christian Broadcasting Network, Senhal Club. He was studying there. So Pat Robertson came to India in 1995. And he knew all our family members. We went there. He asked me so many questions about my, you know, vision, you know, revelation. And he sent a team in 1995. And they shared my story. He shone on 700 Club. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, my brother, you know, he was going to graduate and uh, they invited me. So I went there. I went to embassy, but they gave me visa. Amen. I'm not telling about my travelings. But unknown man of God prophecy fulfilled in my life. Amen. I want to one, say one thing. If you have a real faith in God, you will go to heaven very easy. Amen. Yes. Amen. But even you have a, a lot of invitation letters, this much invitation letters, you will you go to UK embassy, American embassy, it's very hard to get the visa. <laughs> I don't understand why. They say, it's not right time for you to go to UK. <laughs> if you ask questions, they put the Anand number down. It's very hard. But God brought you here. You are living in UK. With Lord God sent you to here with purpose. You born here. Maybe you, for some people came out from other countries to here. Please don't take it easy. Take it serious. It's very hard for us to come to UK even for 15 days. <coughs> fees, how much? And uh, VFS fees, another fees. Mm -hmm. Fingerprint fees. <laughs> Tickets, can you believe how much? Yeah. How many times, you know, they deny? Mm -hmm. Every time, at least $300 we spent for visa. They deny, deny, deny. Every time, like that. We have God is good. Amen. I went to America in 1998. The same time I went to Zimbabwe, her home country. I preached the word of God, then I went back to India. I was a speaker in one convention. 1998, October 1st through 3rd. You know what happened? I shared a little bit of testimony about my journey, mission trip. Then the same night I was traveling to another village. In India, first day we stop late, we eat late, you know, first day very hard. But that's why we finished the meeting like midnight, one o'clock, then we were traveling to another village on my motorbike. In India, two people we use motorbike. Sometimes three people, four people, you can see five people also. My British sister, five people in India are motorbike. <laughs> Four people who use car, ten people who use van, but you cannot see one person in the car in India. But I see one person driving car alone in the UK. <laughs> Even your grandma's grandpa, 90 year grandma, grandpa driving car alone here. Wow, God bless you, UK. You know, your roads are good, your system and custom, you know, buildings and everything good. I want to say again, you have to praise God more than us. Amen. God blessed you here very much. Praise God. Hello, Amen. You know, that night I was traveling on my motorbike with my fifth brother. We traveled half of journey. We need to go three kilometers, uh, three kilometers somewhere to sleep in one house, one pastor house. Pastor was waiting for us. Suddenly, four Hindu militants, robbers, we don't know. They're hiding from the trees, two trees. And I'm passing on car road and motorbike. You know, we go, we go slow, you know. It was cur cur curving. Suddenly they came in front of me with long wooden sticks. At, at a time, four people, they hit me on my forehead. You can see scar on my forehead. I'm black, but you can see scar on my forehead. My skull broke in this size. 
blood coming out. I had a lot of wounds on my body here and here. And here, you know, I lost all the skin and the meat. That was a lot of wounds. Here, a lot of wounds. And they kidnapped us to different locations. And uh, they take up my hands, my legs, my hands to my brother's hands, and my legs to my brother's legs with the ropes. <laughs> we were on the mud road. I saw the four people because we hear the sound from them, but we cannot see a face. But the dark time, night time. Night time, like 1 15, between 1 15 and 1 30. And the leader, we don't know the leader, because he gave knife to another guy. He said, he was forcing him, kill them! When you hear like that, what you do? I hear like that, then I began to pray to God. My final prayer from the bottom of the heart, real prayer. And I told to God, Lord, we are coming to your presence. Please accept. Because the other guy put a knife to here, up to here. He got fear to push. Wait. Final prayer. And actually, I was in between conscious and unconscious. I don't know what's going on. I don't remember anything. But I came to conscious a little bit. And uh, I understood. I prayed to God, Lord, if you give any chance to survive, we do only your ministry. Pray after a few moments later, three guys, not nearly, other three guys said at a time, we don't want to kill these pastors. Now they had a problem between the four people. My brother was begging and asking the leader, you've done everything, you know, uh, we go to our home, you know, please, you know, uh, yes, give a chance to go. But later said, no, no, we will come within five minutes. Be here, be here. then we can see the deed. They went somewhere. They're smoking cigarettes, poor people, drinking wine. My brother understood how far they are. Because night time, fire on the cigarettes. So he understood how far they are. You know, he tried to remove the robes. In my face is this side, his face was that side. They tied up my hands to his hands, my legs to his legs with ropes. When he moved the hand, oh my gosh, a lot of pain. They, they hated me, you know, a lot of, you know, with the sticks, you know. And uh, my blood is coming. I tasted my blood, my own blood. Because coming here, I already have hand to, to do like this. So blood came into my mouth also. And my body like this. Long story makes short. My brother removed my robes and he carried me with his hands near the river. There was a thorn bush near the river. There is no way to escape. And we hear the sound from four people, they're walking. My brother told me, they're coming again. If they come here, they really they will kill us. We need to go into the water to escape. I said, how we can go? And follow me, he said, follow me. You know, we walk from thorns. Indian thorns, not small, big, big thorns. We walked around thorns and we entered the river. When we began to swim the, in the river, there are some water snakes. We pushed the snake that's like this and we began to swim from this side to that side. And we came out from the river to main road at 5 o'clock. We came to sugarcane feed and uh, some farmers began to come to feed at 5 o'clock. When they saw me, my brother, they began to run away. They thought we are robbers coming from sugarcane field. And they see me, and I already have shackle on my body, my portal body full of still blood. But, uh, my brother shouted, we are not robbers, please come. We need to hear hell. And uh, they came, they are Hindus. They came, my brother explained what happened to us. My brothers, you know, they were expecting us for morning devotion. They don't know what happened to us. And they went there, they explained, my second brother and another cousin came to spot and they took us to the hospital in Rajamandri. Mm -hmm. Bishop and Mrs. Bishop, they came to Rajamandri airport. Mm -hmm. they, they traveled to some other place. I went into a hospital. Five doctors came, they checked my body system. They said, no guarantee. Why? Because I lost 60% of my brain. Mm -hmm. 
this news, publishing newspaper, many people coming and going there saw me from the glass wall because I was, I was in ICU. Mm -hmm. They didn't allow people. I was in coma two days. After two days, I came to my conscious. Jesus Christ, he began to speak to me two things. Number one, my son, you're not going to die. You're going to be alive. Amen. Second one, I'm going to use you, bless you more and more. Amen. I felt real strength in my life. Amen. They gave blood into my body because someone in coma in India, they don't do any surgery. Mm. They don't do any surgery. They gave blood into my body. And uh, I had a surgery on my forehead, inside, like uh, seven stitches. Mm. And the doctors removed about 200 thorns from my feet and my body. Same mm. to my brother. You know, I paid a lot of pain. Crucifixion is not easy. But persecution is a little bit easy, but we cannot tolerate, we cannot bear that kind of pain. Okay. Crucifixion? Oh my gosh. Even we cannot watch your church. How did Jesus suffer? Terrible. Terrible. But persecution is okay a little bit. Yeah. If we die, we go to heaven. We don't die, you know, not much. You know, like that wounds. But doctors gave me blood into my body and I survived. But I didn't speak 10 days. I'm a pastor. I need to preach. Without talking, I thought, how can I do the ministry? But God healed me. God yeah. touched me. Mm -hmm. Then after three months, same dreaming, night time, when I go to bed, again four people raising hands with sticks. Then same dreaming, so I couldn't all sleeping in the house. Only one person, I couldn't sleep. They don't know, I didn't tell. But God is good in my life. Amen. God is great in my life. Sometimes I felt headache one side, you know one side, only this side. Sometimes this side, sometimes both sides. When I feel headache, my eyes turn automatically red, red, red color. Yeah. And uh, like water, not tears, water comes. Tears means if you cry, tears comes. I'm not crying, but turn, eyes turn red, water coming like that. Mm. I go to God, Lord, I cannot be like this. Please heal me, touch me, Lord. I pray to God. I pray much because I don't do anywhere three months in a week. Because a lot of wounds, a lot of bandages on my body. Here, here, a lot of one bandages. God really healed me. I never felt any headache. We did get our first boy for the ministry. David, his name. We have four children, three boys, one girl. After my persecution, we did all our children for ministry because God spared my life. God gave me a chance to live on this surface of earth. I want to give more to God. When you receive blessings from the Lord, you say like this also. Amen. When you go to hardships, God, you know, help you to survive. You have to want, you want, you want to give to God something. Amen. Same way, I want to give God more. To bring our children. I want to give more. But I dedicated my life until my death. I want to do this ministry. Whatever it may be cost. Whatever the pers persecution, I walk with God, I live for God, I do the ministry. Nice God. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Oh, God, God. God saved me in 1981 on August 6th. I was a bad man, but God saved me. You're a good man. You come to God, God will save you. Amen. I was in coma two days in the hospital, emergency hospital. They decide between three to five days, people, people will live or dead. That's it. That's the emergency hospital. But you know, I was in the hospital five days when they released me because God healed me. God, Amen. God spoke to me. Two things. Amen. My son, you're not going to die. You're going to be alive. Second one, I'm going to use you. Bless you more, bless you more and more. I hear God's voice. 
Amen. So I felt strength in my life. I got life again. Amen. So be not the hospital. You never go to coma. Amen. Come on to God. Amen. God will bless you. God Amen. will restore you. Amen. God will use you. Amen. Give you a heart to God. Amen. God will receive you. Amen. Amen. God will honor and God will bless you more and more. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, tomorrow we are going to one pastor's meeting. <coughs> Sunday we go to some other place for the wedding. Monday we are leaving. If God's will, we will meet like this. If not, we meet in heaven. Amen. We come from India to heaven. You come from you go to heaven. If you go to Zimbabwe, <laughs> you go to Zimbabwe. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you all. This is only three days meeting, but we feel like three years and thirty years fellowship, like family. We love you. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Praise God. Amen. You know, we may not meet tomorrow and day of tomorrow, so that's why I want to give <coughs> hands each every one of you. It's okay to pray for you like that. Do you want prayers? Please stand on your feet. <coughs> Please come one by one. Me and my wife, we want to pray. We want to release you into the new level through the ministry work with this church under the bishop leaderships. Bishop and Mrs. Bishop leadership. Very important. If you have any sickness and if you have any problem, please begin to talk to God. God will remove everything. God will deliver you from all the hardships. If you have any family problems, young people, nowadays, you know, even India also changing now. Young people, rebellion, changing because they're watching Western, you know, movies, cultures coming, you know, like that, you know, uh, they're spoiling their, their future. So we need to, you know, pray for them. We need to bring them into the kingdom of God. You know, it's very important. So each one here began to pray to God. Ask God what you need. God will give it to you. I, I want to share the word of God, but no, no, not much time. But I want to take time to pray for you. Okay, maybe sisters, anyone can sing small chorus or something like that, then we we'll begin to pray for the people. Okay. Give the time. He wants to pray for you to have invitation for visitation. Because the angel come and visit him and take him to heaven. Because of that, he's able to release that. So all of us who want that visitation, that is what God wants us to have. He wants us to have face-to-face -face encounter. He wants to take us to heaven. And that is a, that is a, uh, something that each and every one of us can experience. Especially God has used him and God has blessed him. So if you want that encounter, if you want all that experience, come up so he can pray for you. In 1981, God told me, God showed me the whole world. He told me, I will send you to the nations. An unknown man of God, his name is Bab Swanger. From, India, from America, he came to India, I told you. He told me, I will, I will send you to the nations also. He told me, you go to Singapore, Australia, America, and other countries. Mm. A prophecy fulfilled in my life. God took yes. me to the all seven continents in the world. Amen. And 45 countries. Yes. You know, I cannot travel like that. My friends, you know, engineering friends, they're doing jobs, they're earning a lot of money but they don't go to even one country. Mm. But they told me, hey, what you're doing? Why you discarded your studies? What you're doing? I said, Lord's work. I'm pastor. What is the meaning of pastor? You preach in the church, that's a ministry. Why you go to other countries? Oh, God is sending me to the go over there to preach the gospel. We have three verses in the Bible. Number one, go into all the world to preach the gospel mm. to every creation. Number two, go to the nations, make the disciples. Mm -hmm. Number three, when Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will see the supernatural power. Amen. Then God will make us his witness. Amen. witnesses. Then God began to use us in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and uttermost part of the earth. Amen. This promise 
to everyone, not only me, everyone. And this man of God had a word from the Lord, God will take him to 40 countries. The same way, God will use you mightily in this world, if you are willing, if you are ready to walk with him, to, to obey him, it will be done. Praise God. Thank you. God bless you all. Please pray for us and be with us to do more ministries. We welcome you to India. Make a team and come to India to preach the gospel. I believe, I believe your 50 years ministry equal to one mission trip, two weeks mission trip. Mm. If you come to India, you can save, depending on the meetings, 500 to 1,000 people. Mm. Maybe you can save 50 years because your culture is not, uh, you know, it is independent culture. It's not easy to reach the person. In India, somehow we go to village, we can set up the tent and we can preach the word of God. But here, you know, you cannot, you cannot preach on the streets, only in the church buildings, like within four walls. Outside, I don't know, outside you cannot preach. Mm. But in India, if you come to India, you can see the more people. Trust me, mm. believe me, make a team. Save money, make a team and come to India. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. God bless your countries and this country, UK. Abundantly. Praise God. So if you want him to pray for you, just please come up quickly so we can go to the next segment. It's praying for not only going to the station heaven. If you have any sickness, any problems, need not tell me. Just tell to God for I pray. Anything. Importations. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sisters. Oh. 
church. The church is the only place you can go into and have your life being transformed and changed just like this. You can go into a club, you can go into a pub, you can go to your workplace, you can go to the hospital, wherever you go. You may walk in, but you'll always walk out the same. But when you walk into the place where Jesus is, your life will never be the same. And all it takes is for you to just desire. This is one thing that God cannot do for you. You have to have an expected heart. Come expected. Come desire, Lord, I want a change. We are in the end times. And many things that the Bible has written on, we have not even experienced it. And that is what we are about today. The prophetic night is giving you that opportunity and training the young people. At the same time, I'll say we have double because we have a man that the angels took to heaven. And I ask you to come out so he can release upon you. The same way that we pray and you get healed, the same way we give you a prophetic word. Because he already been there, you cannot give what you don't have. Because he already been there, once he prayed for you, get ready, your life will not be the same. Amen. Because you see, this is what Jesus came down to do. He came to bring heaven to earth. When he came down on the earth, heaven came with him. And when he leave, he didn't take heaven away from him. He left heaven with us so that we can have an encounter. But you have to desire the encounter. You have to want the encounter. You have to want the things of God. They are supernatural. They are not just flesh, but they are spirits. So be excited. And all you have to do is say, Father, I thank you. I thank you. Because the price is already been paid for. You don't have to go to witch doctors. You don't have to go sell your soul. You don't have to go to covenants to get it. God's already given it to you. <laughs> Church, the Lord wants us to have a foretaste of glory of heaven on earth. Amen. All of us. It is not only for the man of God. It's not only for the bishops, for the prophets, for the apostles. It is once you give your life to Christ, you are in a heck of a journey. Amen. You are in for a beautiful journey. But the trouble is, we attitude, our attitudes just have to change. We have to know that all things, it is possible with Christ. Tonight, we're going to take it to another level. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the young people. You may be seated.